have in the world. You guys all with me here? You got a page you're writing this stuff down on? Everybody got your masks covering your nose and mouth? Awesome. So um, today, types of substances, and you've encountered several of these different types of substances as we did the lab in the last couple of days with the sand and the salt. And um, so what we're going to do today is kind of break this down a little bit and start to think about, okay, what is it that makes those substances be able to do the things that they do when we're doing the lab? So let's first start off by just making a list of the different substances that you encountered in your lab. What'd you encounter? Salt, right? What is salt, by the way? It's a mineral. What's here? Solid. It's, a it's a solid. It's a mineral. It's a mineral. What does that mean? You just like heard that somewhere. It comes from a rock. What's it made of? What's another name for salt? Sodium, right? Is it just sodium? Sodium. Anybody know? Chloride. Yeah. What does that mean? Compound. Compound. It means, like, what is sodium? Like, where do you find sodium in the world? Um, Not like in the world, like where? Um, in rocks, on the grass. Oh. Isn't, that a, isn't that salt? Let me give you a hint. What's this? Table. It's on there somewhere, right? Yep. So the periodic table. What about chlorine? Table. It's also on the periodic table. So those two things are elements, right? You've like heard of those sometime in your life, right? So that's one thing that we encountered, right? And it has a lot of different properties about it, right? Um, it's a salad, right? Somebody said that. Is it always a salad? Who looked up the melting point of salt chloride? What? 1436. Melts at, I don't really care the exact number. I'm just going to call it 1400 degrees. Was that Celsius probably? Probably Celsius. Okay. In other words, stupid hot, right? Okay. Because if it was Fahrenheit, it wouldn't even be as hot, but that's like stupid hot. Um, so it has this property. This is a property right here. A melting point is a property. You remember talking about that? Okay. It's a solid at room temperature, of course. What else did we try with, with sodium chloride? Sand. No, like what did you do with it? Oh, no, like dissolved it. You, you salted it, what? Dissolved it. Dissolved it, yeah, okay. I just said that. I'm sorry, I, I can't always hear everything. What, what are you gonna say? Well, it's the, it's in Fahrenheit. Oh, that is Fahrenheit, okay. It doesn't really matter at this point. We're never gonna heat anything up quite that hot probably anyhow. So that's, I mean, I guess technically I think gas actually burns around that temperature, but in terms of our ability to heat something up that high, we're, we don't heat things up that high usually. All right, so um, it does dissolve in water, right? That's kind of important. If salt did not dissolve in water, would this lab have worked the same way? No, why not? You couldn't like separate it from the sand, right? You couldn't use the filter anyhow, right? I know. I mean, it would still technically be possible, but it would take you like two years. Okay, so what's the next substance that we encounter? Sand. Anybody know what sand is? It comes from the beach, it's a mineral, it comes from rocks, right? So, sand is an interesting material. Um, I believe that the sand that I gave you actually is a pretty pure kind of a thing, but you're right. Like you get it from rocks, you get it from the beach. Like there's all different kinds of sand actually. Did you know that there's different kinds of sand? Did you know that there's some beaches that are like black colored and other beaches that are like white colored? Okay. Because there's all different kinds of sand. Actually, the formal scientific definition for sand just involves a measurement of how big the particles are. Okay, and if you take environmental science or earth-based science, we'll talk more about specifically what makes sand and how big those particles are. 
Um, we'll talk about it specifically related to soil and how soil has different size particles in it. And sand is one of those kinds of particles. But that's, that's not important for chemistry. The important thing for chemistry um, is not even what it's made of. The important thing for chemistry, because it's made of um, some silicon, if you're looking for what elements that would be, silicon, okay? Plus, I'm just going to do this because there's other stuff in there too, but it doesn't matter for now, okay? But the really important thing for this lab is what about sand? It doesn't dissolve, right? What about its melting point? It's a salad, by the way, right? Did anybody think about considering whether sand would melt or not? Somebody Google it. Does sand melt? How else do you get glass? How else do you get glass? Good point, right? What? 1700, and that one is Celsius? So, 1700 degrees Celsius. So now I want you to just notice that like one degree of Fahrenheit is smaller than one degree of Celsius, which means that this is like, I don't know, like ballpark one and a half or two times as hot as this one. Okay. Like it's like stupid, stupid hot. Okay. This is like, do you know where in the world you encounter melted sand? In a volcano. Wait, so there's glass in a volcano? Well, melted glass. I mean, that's basically what rock is, right? Is melted stuff like that, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. So this melts really ridiculously hot. We are never in this class going to heat anything up that hot. If we melted something that hot, we would burn the school down probably. <gasps> don't worry. I'm not going to let you do it. We don't have equipment that would do this, okay? So... What about this? Somebody, somebody just said this. This does not dissolve, right? All right. Now, what other substances did we encounter in this lab? Water. Super important, right? What does H2O mean? Oh, good. Okay. So what are some important properties of water for this lab? Just shout it out. What is it? I, I got this. Liquid. Liquid at room temperature, right? Now, how many of you guys know if, if water were a solid at room temperature, would this lab have worked the same way? No, like what if we were trying to do this lab outside in February when it's like three below? Would this have worked? Because you wouldn't have had liquid water to do the whole thing with, right? We also wouldn't have a tower outside. Why would you need tower? For the scale and for the stove. Yeah, but there's like once it had batteries. So water has to be a liquid and we have to be able to dissolve right? The water or the sand has to, or salt has to be able to dissolve in the water and the sand has to be able to not dissolve in water, right? Yeah. What if we put oil instead of water? Does salt dissolve in oil? Has anybody ever tried that before? That's your homework assignment over break, okay? Get in the kitchen and get your little salt shaker. Don't you dare make a big mess in your mama's kitchen, okay? Get just a little bit of oil, like in a little dish, like a spoonful, and get your salt shaker and mix a little bit together and see what happens. See if you can get it to dissolve. Okay? Does that sound like a fun, like, five-minute lab activity to do? Yeah, Try it out, okay? So, these are the types of substances that we encountered, okay? And then there's some other kinds of substances that we actually encountered that you haven't thought about yet. Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? What? Water's melting point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That is true, yes. What are some other substances that we encountered? The plastic graduated or like the beakers. The glass, like the containers, right? Yeah. Can I just, can I just say like random containers? 
What's the important thing about them? They're solid, right? Like, what if we had what if we had a container that was made of salt? Would that be helpful for this lab? No. Because it would dissolve, right? Yeah. That would be inconvenient. That would be not cool. Okay, so they have to um, hold the liquids. Or what if, what worse, what if we had a material that reacted when you touched water to it? That would be not good, right? That's not Right, like that'd be not cool. So, so that's a really important thing, okay? What's something else that we encountered? The gas burner, or the hot plate. The hot plate, that's true. That has to get hot, right? I'm not even going to put that one down, but you guys, but that's also true. Is there something that we're missing? There's something that you're missing, a kind of substance that you're missing. Is it the air? And I'll give you a hint. You ready? This is your hint. Are you ready? Yeah. No. Is it the air? The lab, the counter, the cups that the salt and sand go in. Is it oxygen? Salt, sand, water, random. Go write it down. Mixture of what? What mixture did you encounter? Mixture of salt and sand, right? Yeah. Did you have that at some point, like before you added water to it? Yeah. Probably some groups like poured them both separately into their water. But either way, you've got, you've got, you encountered that, right? So you had a mixture of sand and salt, which basically looked like this, right? That's like me looking at it under a magnifying glass, right? And some of them were sand and some of them were salt, but you can hardly tell the difference. Did anybody in this class try separating them with the tweezers? No, did you? No. Put your masks on. I had some folks try to do that in my second class. And it didn't work. I why. Well, I mean, it kind of did. But, like, it was very impractical. Like, they tried it. They spent, like, 15 minutes on it before they gave up. They were really committed. I was proud of them. And um, they did. They tried it. And um, they just decided that it was really impractical. Like, they just really couldn't see it well enough to get them separated, especially in any kind of time frame, right? Like it was going to take them forever if they did continue to do it. So they stopped. Okay. But there we go. We also encountered what other mixture? Uh, water. Yeah, let's go in order. So first we have salt plus sand plus water, right? And that kind of looked like this. Here's the container, right? Here's the sand at the bottom. There's the water in it. And then where's the salt? The Dissolved in the water. I'm not even going to try to draw that right now. Um, but it was in there. Okay? We'll do a little bit more talking about drawing that later. Um, what about your mixture? What was the other mixture that you had here? And if I draw kind of a similar picture, there it is, right? Same thing, only no sand in there. Right? Yeah. Any other mixtures that you had in this lab, or does that really kind of do the trick? Yeah. Sand and water. You had some wet sand, right? And then some of you had to be really careful that you like actually had literally just sand and water as opposed to having sand with salty water, right? Some of you made that mistake early on, right? But this one would be, how do we draw this one? Like this? I don't know. Hey, now, word to the wise here. Am I drawing the actual particles that make up the sand? 
No, right? Like, because if this is one particle of sand, like one grain of sand, how many like particles of silicon plus whatever is probably in there? Like more than you even want to think about counting, right? So the actual picture of the grain of sand might be more like that, right? Grain of sand with particles, right? So I just want you to realize here, like I am not drawing particle diagrams in my little scratchy pictures here, okay? Sound good? So we are going to talk more about these after we do some more discussion, okay? But I want you to recognize that this is the stuff that we're dealing with in the lab, okay? So now for, for the next 10 or so, 10 or 15 minutes, hopefully we can finish it up quickly here. I want you to get final measurements from your lab and get your final percentages because we're, we're pretty close, right? Like most of you just have to finish it up. Um, I put your, I put your, if you had liquid still in your beakers, I put them on to finish boiling off this morning. So hopefully they're getting pretty close at this point. Does that sound probably about right where everybody is? Everybody had already done like the filtering parts, right? Is that shake your head? Is, is that true? Okay. So, um, Go finish the lab in about 10 minutes and then come back and, and, hey, listen, finish finding your percents and finish finding like the analysis part of the lab report. Finish those two things. Ready?